Hi, I'm Nathan Cha. I'm an artist and a designer. And today I will be showing you how to sew a fitted face mask at home. It looks like this and might help prevent the spread of a virus by offering some protection to yourself and especially others around you. You will be needing some cardboard or paper, pens, measuring tape, some gauze or bandages, some fabrics of your choice, ideally cotton, a pair of scissors, elastic, and some fabric for the lining. We will be taking four measurements. The length of your nose, the tip of your nose to your chin, the top of your nose to your cheekbone, and your chin to the end of your jawbone. The rough pattern will look something like this, and I will show you right now where the measurements we just took will be located. As you can see, I have left some space for my nose. Depending on the length of your nose, you might want to adjust this though. After having created a bit more of a dynamic line that is modeled perfectly on your face, we are now ready for a last fit check. Now on to preparing our parts. I'm cutting both sides of the pattern from differently colored fabrics for a funky middle split look, as well as mirroring it for the lining part. Three layers of gauze or bandage are added to provide a filter between your inner and outer layers of fabric. We are starting off by stitching the two outer parts together and pressing apart the seam allowance by ironing it. In the next step, we are stitching along the edges of the gauze rectangle to proceed more comfortably. Now we will be drawing the mirrored pattern on the bandage material and, using a zigzag stitch, join the layers together by creating a grid pattern as seen on the photo. This will help make your mask more durable for each time you wash it. Cutting away the excess material around this part while leaving one centimeter of seam allowance, we will now pin the gauze part on the inner side of our lining fabric and stitch it together on the outer sides at 0.5 seam allowance. Make sure to join it together in the middle to also close the nose part. Now we'll be assembling all parts together by pinning them atop each other with the insides facing up. Do leave a gap of about 5 to 7 centimeters at the bottom part of the mask after sewing an edge so that you can turn over the entire thing. Trimming the seam allowance to 0.5 cm on all sides, you are now ready to turn your mask to the right side and proceed on to ironing the piece. Pull the lining slightly away from the outer edge and make sure to thoroughly press all seams before folding in half and pressing the middle part too. The last step will be closing the gap you left previously, either by hand or machine, and adding the elastic on the sides. Cut your flat elastic in half and join it together with a narrow zigzag stitch, creating a curve for the ear part. Now proceed to stitching it to the sides in a length that's firm, but does not cut into your ears. So that's it, you're done! A quick disclaimer at the end, that this mask does not offer 100% protection, but might help in restricting droplet transmission from yourself to others. It can also help ease anxiety in social settings. Thanks for tuning in, and take care out there.